the Usher Foundation. Episode 1. Deafening Silence. <sighs> Remind me why I have to be the one rummaging through these statements. Ah, there you are. The Ogallala Incident. Huh, never heard of you. Also, tell me why nothing in this place has ever been digitized. It is 2021. I should be able to just hit search and find exactly what I want. That's whatever. Uh, let's see. Multiple statements. That's new. First one is... Uh, statement of Tiffany Hall regarding an incident while on a school field course and loss of hearing. Original statement given September 21st, 2017. Audio recording by Gil Nelson, lead archival assistant of the Usher Foundation, Washington, D.C. Statement begins. Technically, I'm a junior at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, or UNL, but I've been going for about four years now. I started my first year as an English major, but realized I absolutely hated it. No real surprise. I wasn't a fan of school in general, but my parents had insisted I go. That's when I tried my hand at fine arts. I'd always enjoyed my art classes in high school and thought that maybe I might keep enjoying them through college. That ended up being partially true. But I'm rambling. A long story short, I liked art when it was done my way or alone, away from other people. The idea of having it have to fit someone else's mold always bothered me. It also meant I was horrible during critiques, and yes, before I get murdered by other art students, I realize that isn't the best mentality going into a critique. I, I didn't really care, though. I just needed a paper to walk across the stage with so that my parents would be happy. Uh, that all being said, my first year, I had heard of uh, summer art classes. Uh, the university had a summer art study each year, uh, basically a little summer camp near the town of Ogallala, Nebraska. You travel down, paint some beautiful scenery at Cedar Point, and then go home with a few extra college credits. Kind of a nice win-win, I thought. The classes are pretty small in scale, and only a handful of students attend. My class itself only had four people in it, which I liked. Less people, the better. I enjoyed painting mostly in solitude. The trip itself started off fine, minus a boring bus ride. Ogallala is four hours from the university. You ever driven four hours through open Nebraskan countryside? Let's just say if you've seen two minutes, you've seen it all. Thankfully, I had a full charge of my phone and headphones so I could drown out the sound of the bus and empty countryside as we drove by. After we finally arrived, our class were assigned bunks and sent on our ways. Everything was gorgeous, rolling hills, a bumbling river. I was eager to start painting. I noticed how quiet it was as well. I thought to myself that it must be because we are so far away from any major cities, but now I'm a little less sure. The next day or two went as planned, simple painting classes while I explored the area and just plopped down wherever I felt like to paint. I was having a blast, honestly. The only downer was cell phone signal and every once in a while my ears would start hurting. Have you ever had it be so quiet that your ears start hurting or ringing? I looked it up, and if it's too quiet, uh, sometimes you'll start hearing random things inside of your body or, or, or ringing, like tinnitus or something like that. A really weird phenomenon. But it would just randomly happen to me. Uh, mostly it just annoyed me. I, I took ibuprofen for the pain and ignored the silence feeling, and after a minute or so, it would just go away. So I didn't really think much of it at the time. It only happened a couple times, and... I, I wasn't going to let it ruin my, my summer fun. It wasn't until the fourth day that it happened. I, I had been going further and further each day. Mostly my professor didn't mind, but that day I really wanted to climb a particular hill to get a better view of the area. The hill itself wasn't too high, and realistically it wasn't that far from camp, but when I went up it, I was well and truly alone. It was in the morning, around 10 a.m., and I had just sat down on the hill and got out my painting supplies when I noticed it. I couldn't hear anything. It was total silence. No wind, 
No rustling of my art bag. Not even my own breath. At first, I ignored it like I had the previous time, but this time, it didn't go away. It just stayed. And then I started hearing myself swallow. I could hear every beat of my heart. Even my blood flowing around my body. I cannot describe how deeply uncomfortable that is. I closed my eyes and put my fingers to my ears, trying to rub away the sensation. I deeply regret doing that. It only made a horrible noise of the sound of ear cartilage moving. Didn't know that one could hear that. When I opened my eyes, everything was gone. And not in just a I got turned around kind of way. Everything was gone. My world was black. Not only was my hearing gone, but now my sight. I tried standing, but immediately I fell. It's as if I had no balance at all. I had terrible, terrible vertigo. It's like I became an infant. I had forgotten how to walk. I I frantically looked around trying to find something, anything. The whole while, I could hear my heart rate increasing. I could hear each beat a maddening crescendo as I spurned it on with my own terror. I could even hear my bones and tendons protest as I tried moving my body. It was as if my hearing was somehow only turned inward. I tried to cry and relieve the tension, but I simply could not. At some point, I just kind of turned off. I sat there, still listening to the horrendous symphony that was my body. I didn't know how long it lasted. It felt like days. At some points, I tried to scream, but nothing came out. I could hear and feel my vocal cords strain and my throat open, but no noise came out. Only in. Further attempts at walking only increasingly led to bouts of vertigo and falling over. I even tried crawling, but that proved too difficult. The ground itself felt different. At some point, I remember rubbing my hand across it and it was cold, hard, almost felt like. It was so strange, but I knew it wasn't grass anymore. At some point, days, weeks, months into this, I felt a tremor below me. I could feel myself slowly rising as if I was on an elevator. I turned my head left and right just out of instinct. I could still see nothing, but I could feel something, a presence, at least I think. It seemed like it was all around me, too big for me to try to put into words. It was everything. I don't know. I just instinctively bowed my head. I've never been religious, but if this was some kind of god, I I wanted off their wild ride, and placating them seemed the best option in my crazed mind. And that's when it all suddenly ended. I raised my head, and I was back in my bed at the dorms, at the university, not at the camp. I could see and hear again. I asked my roommate. They said I had come back early from camp, and... She had found me in bed when she woke up in the morning and didn't want to bother me. Apparently, I had been asleep for 12 hours since she had woken up. I rummaged through my art supplies looking for my completed canvases. I had painted several while I was at camp, but I couldn't find any of them, save one. One I don't remember painting. An empty void of space, entirely black, so deep and endless that it hurt my eyes to look at. I brought it in case it would help or something. I don't know what exactly you can do, but I couldn't keep this inside. Somebody should know, and your organization looks up these sorts of things, right? Besides, I was visiting family not too far away, and thought, Maybe it'd be a good time killer. So, thanks. 
Statement ends. Further investigation does show that Miss Hall did sign up for and receive credit for her summer course. Though no other evidence can be corroborated at this time, the effect that Miss Hall was speaking of is similar to an anechoic chamber. Um, the same effects of loss of balance, increased anxiety, and hearing things we normally wouldn't inside of the body. Uh, there are, are several such chambers across the states and across the world, though none near the state of Nebraska. Uh, what strikes me as odd is that in our initial investigation in 2017, it looks like we spoke with the RA of her dorm. Um, the RA said that she never saw Miss Hall return to the dorm, neither did any of the surveillance cameras that we asked the university to see. Uh, we tried reaching out to Miss Hall or her professor for the class, a Mr. Tachevik, but we couldn't get a hold of either of them. Tiffany Hall dropped out of school not much longer after this incident and spent several stints in a psychiatric hospital over the next couple years. I had Sam look into it, but we only know that she went to the Gentle Breeze Psychiatric Hospital each time. Unfortunately, due to HIPAA, we are unable to see why she was admitted into the psychiatric hospital, but the hospital itself seems to have gone out of business. When we try reaching out to them for any sort of comment or information, the line's always dead. Since January of 2019, there has been a remarkable lack of information about Miss Hall. It seems that sometime in 2019, she all but vanished. Just one day, no more social media posts, no more family visits, no more college classes, no more attending work. And stranger than that, there was never a missing persons report ever filed. Seems like no one cared, nor remembered. Hmm. And then there's this. Ouch. Okay, okay. I see what she meant. God. Yeah. Ah. Uh, mm. Yeah. That is giving me a migraine just squinting at it. Back into the file you go. Oof. While this painting is certainly unsettling and makes me very curious, without any further information, I really can't verify if this was just a wonderfully crafted story or a truly paranormal experience. There are no witnesses, nor corroborating testimonies, and on top of that, it seems Miss Hall may have been struggling from some sort of mental disorder, which could have led to her hospitalizations. Now, that's pure speculation, but that seems to be all we can do with this statement. There are still more statements from this camp, though. So, we'll see if something here can fill in the blanks. For now, we'll keep on looking. Recording ends. Hi everyone, Gil here, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for listening to the first episode of the Usher Foundation. The Usher Foundation is a side story that is completely fan-made for the ever-popular Magnus Archives. If you're not familiar, the Magnus Archives is a horror podcast on RustyQuill.com. It was written and performed by Jonathan Sims and directed and produced by Alexander J. Newell with an incredible cast of other voice actors and voice actresses, they are excellent. And the show itself is also excellent. It has inspired me to kind of uh, try my hand in the horror genre a bit more publicly. Um, so I do hope that you guys enjoy that. Uh, please do check out the original source material for this. And if you guys have any feedback or any uh, comments, questions, anything like that, please let me know. I'd love to hear it, but until then, I'll see you guys in the next episode.